This is the second in a series of videos showing the purpose and navigation of the USGS Sediment Portal. This video will show users how to select and download data for sites of interest using some of the filtering tools provided by the portal. The first view of the Sediment Portal provides all the sediment sampling sites within the United States. Most users will want to subset the sites to ones that they are interested in. To do that, we have a variety of filtering tools over here to the right, which will help get the sites down to ones that you're interested in. They are categorized as boundary filters, data characteristic filters, and site characteristic filters. Boundary filters allow users to select sites based upon different types of polygons. These polygons include a USGS uh, basin boundary, an EPA level 2 ecoregion number, hydrologic unit code numbers, or states. Data characteristic filters are thresholds that allow users to select sites based upon minimum years of daily data, minimum numbers of discrete samples, or a year range in which data were collected. Site characteristic filters allow users to select sites based upon attributes of those sites. These filters include USGS hydrologic benchmark sites. These are sites which the USGS has maintained stream flow and water quality sampling at sites that are downstream from basins that are minimally impacted by human actions. Also included are USGS station ID, USGS station name, user-defined ranges of upstream drainage area, information on soil conditions, including user-defined ranges of soil erodibility, soil K factor, rainfall runoff factor, or soil permeability. Users can also filter sites based upon ranges of upstream land use, including percentages of urban, agricultural, and forest land use. So let's go through a couple of examples as to how to use these filtering tools. So first, let's pretend that we want information only on the Missouri River, but we don't know anything else about our sampling sites or, um, or boundaries, etc. So let's first type in Missouri into the USGS station name. And we can go up here and hit Apply Filter. Note that you can click on Apply Filter or hit Enter to Apply Filter to get the data you want. So we get, what, what is returned are any sites that have the word Missouri in them. You'll see that most of these sites are on the Missouri River. A couple sites are on a tributary over here. We have one site out in the Utah, uh, on the Utah-Colorado border that ha must have the word Missouri in it. Let's pretend now that we want to get information on one site specifically. So we'll use our site identify tool to click on a site I'll click on this one. And the site ID tool will indicate that this site is the Missouri River at Herman, Missouri, with this USGS stream gauge ID, this drainage area, and these periods of discrete and daily record. So, what we will do is we'll type in this USGS stream gauge ID into our USGS station ID filter 0693 4500 and hit apply filter. And you see that now we only have that site selected. At this point, we could go over and hit download data to get data for that site. Um, but I want to show a couple more examples. So let's pretend now that we want to get information not only for that site, but for all sediment sampling sites upstream from that site. To do this, let's first clear out our filter to go back to our original set of data. I'm going to click on USGS basin boundaries as the overlay. What will come up are all of the basin boundaries for all of the sites displayed. And what I'm going to do is go up and enter in the same USGS stream gauge ID in the basin boundary filter, 0693-4500. Hit apply filter. And what you will see now is that the sediment sampling sites are restricted not only to the, the site we selected, but every site upstream from that site and that also the USGS Basin Boundaries later la layer was filtered as well. So now we only have the Basin Boundary for the Missouri River at Herman. Let's show a couple more examples. Let's take a look at Level 2 ecoregion. So I'm going to clear my filter again, and I'm going to pull up Level 2 ecoregions. 
as an overlay. Let's pretend that we know what level 2 ecoregion we want. We looked it up on the web, and we want information on cold deserts, which corresponds to EPA level 2 ecoregion 10.1. And I'll hit Apply Filter. And I click out here in the ocean to get my Site ID tool to go away. And what you'll see is that the, we have all the, we have both the ecoregion level, level 2 ecoregion layer was filtered, and we have the sediment sampling sites within that ecoregion. With both the level 2 ecoregion and the Huck filters, you have the option of using a wildcard character to get either level 1 ecoregions or various, various Huck levels. Let's show that quickly. I'm going to type in 10 and star to indicate that we want uh, all the North American deserts. So let's hit apply filter. So that's level 1 ecoregion 10. And now we can see we have an expanded set of sediment sampling sites and ecoregions. Let's hit clear filter. Let's pull up Huck 8s and remove level 2 ecoregions. And so with Hucks, let's pretend that we want only information for a Huck 2 of code 10. And so I'll hit 10 and star. So I want all of the Hucks that have. With, in which the first two digits are 1, 0. I'll hit Apply Filter. And you can see that we get all the hucks in the Missouri River Basin, which corresponds to level 2 region of 10. If we want to get information on a specific huck 8, we can type 10, 27, 01, 03, which is just a one that I'm aware of in northeast Kansas, and hit Apply. And you can see we have one in Northeast Kansas, I'm going to double click down to where I can see that more closely. And you can see that we have data for this specific Huck 8. So that is all of the examples I'm going to show of how to use filters. If you want for more information on any, any of the filters I didn't show here, just go to the user, the Quick Start menu or the User Guide, and they, they will help you use those filters. Also, if you enter data that are outside of the range of any of these values in the site characteristic box or data characteristic filters, error messages will pop up to indicate that you have gone outside of the range, and, th and that will help you um, help guide you as to how to use those filters. Now I want to focus a little more on how to download data. So you selected what looks like three sites. Um, all three have daily data. Two of them have discrete data. Let's go over here and hit download data. A pop-up will come up that indicates uh, which data and gives you choices as to which data you want to download. By default, because we have both discrete and daily flow sites, daily sediment sites, sorry, you, these check boxes are indicated. First is the daily flow and sediment data. This question mark here is a hover, which indicates the type of data you may want to download. Also checked is discrete sample data. You have the option of getting daily flow information for any of your discrete sampling sites. You also have the option of, if you're not interested in the sediment data themselves, but only want information on site attributes, to check this box. There are also options for downloading either comma-separated CSV or tab-separated files. Or if you have a particularly la large data download, you can enter in your email address and the data will be sent to you, um, so, you can get, so you can continue working in the portal. So we've selected our sites we want, now all I have to do all we have to do is click Download Data. So the request was sent. And it'll show that it is waiting for us. You see a new zip file pops up down here. You can click on that zip file. I will pull that window over here. And you can see the four types of data that we have downloaded. So first is our daily data file. We have a daily sites file, which is the site attribute information for any of our daily sites. We have a discrete data file, and we have a discrete sites uh, information uh, file, which show which is site attribute information for any of our discrete sites. The discrete sites and daily sites data are formatted identically and contain the same data, but they uh, correspond to either daily or discrete sites. So let's extract these files. I'm going to pick a folder in uh, my my documents. Folder. I'm gonna, it's called said portal download. I'll click on that folder, hit OK, 
and I will hit extract. I had some data in there before, so I'll just copy and replace those data, and now they're extracted. The next part of, so that concludes the demonstration of how to filter the data. Thanks for learning how to select and download data for sites of interest from the USGS Sediment Data Portal. The next video in this series will show the data contained within the various files that you downloaded from the portal.